guys, thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Sabrina and I make pottery here on this channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how I made this. So if that sounds exciting, stay tuned, like this video, and subscribe for more pottery related content. Let's get to it. So it has been a while since I sat down and made a video tried to the other day, but first my battery died, and then once I charged it, um, then my SD card filled up, so I just decided that that wasn't the day for it, but here I am now. And we're just going to be throwing this, I believe, pound and a half ball of clay. This is Amico Stoneware. I believe it is number 48, which is not my preferred clay, but for whatever reason, that is the only one they ever have at the Blick that I go to. Um, yeah, It's really frustrating. There aren't really any places in my actual city that sell clay or anything related to it, uh, so usually I drive like an hour away to go to a Blick, or there's... Um, like an hour and a half away, I think there's two different places that are smaller, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really like the idea of getting clay shipped to me just because it's expensive, because usually clay is sold in 50 pound boxes, um, and so I would rather just drive somewhere and spend that shipping money on an actual box of clay, so that's how I live my life. But yes, I have been very busy. I am back to working a lot again. Um, I'm up to three jobs at the moment. Um, one of them is my pottery teaching gig, which has been really, really awesome. Um, I've been doing it for like two months now. Um, but it's really, yeah, it really just warms my heart. Um, it makes me really happy to be able to like call myself a pottery teacher. So that's been going really well. I have like a beginner's class and I have a, like an intermediate class. Um, yeah, pretty much I just kind of, I'm a very relaxed teacher if you couldn't uh, make that conclusion on your own, but pretty much like wherever you are as far as like skill goes or just uh, like investment, kind of go wherever we can. But yeah, it's so cute. I especially like teaching the beginner students because, I don't know, there's just so much excitement and potential and all of that, and it's really cute, and it's cool to see people go from, you know, trying to center clay for the first time to glazing their pot for the first time, and I was quite, I guess I wouldn't say pleased, but I was amused. Um, my students did not enjoy glazing, uh, which glazing is my least favorite part of the process. So I was kind of glad that they felt my pain, I guess. I've only heard a few people say that they actually enjoy glazing, which props to them. Uh, I wish I enjoyed glazing. I like making glazes, but I haven't, I haven't actually made a glaze in um, over a year which is really sad because uh, that's when I stopped working at the pottery studio at my old school so and I've been meaning to make my own glazes for myself but as you can see my studio is not very big um, and as I said it's not super easy to get like clay materials including dry materials um, in my area and shipping that is hard too because I would want to buy it, everything in bulk just because, you know, you'd be using it a lot so I might as well stock up. But if I'm getting like 300 pounds of dry materials shipped to me, yeah, shipping is, is a lot. So, oh goodness, got a little wobble. But yeah, I'm sure I could find somewhere closer that I could get some dry materials, but... It hasn't really been my goal or my focus, uh, but 
it would be really convenient, especially for clear glaze because that's kind of it's kind of my preferred glaze, honestly, just because I do really like painting and like drawing more so than combining glazes and stuff. So I would rather just use under glaze to make something look really cool. And then just throw clear glaze on there. So if I could just whip up a big old bucket of clear glaze and just have that ready to go just dip everything, it'd be great. But I don't, so I paint it on at the moment. Uh, and the studio I teach classes at, I think they are working on having a dipping clear glaze, so that'll be fun. But hopefully in the future, if I have a bigger, uh, you know, cleaner space to work out of, I think that would be more ideal for making glazes. I feel like when I'm talking it's kind of hard to do a, like a clean pole. I'm not really sure what this is actually. I guess it could just be like a really decently sized mug. I don't know. What I do know is that I would love to uh, get another pull out of it. Because the last batch of mugs that I threw, they were all like just slightly thicker than I would like them to be. And it irked me quite a bit. So I'm going to try my best. Yep, so I've been teaching my classes. I also have started training to become a screen printer, which has been very exciting. Yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of learning the basics at the moment, but hopefully in the next few weeks I will be printing shirts and other fun stuff. Hopefully towards the end of the year I will actually be able to print my own designs, and hopefully they will be available to you, whoever it is that's watching this, if you so please. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, I'm also still working retail part-time, which is fine, I guess. There, there are worse things I could be doing with my time, but I do miss the studio, which is what I say in pretty much every single video, but yeah. Oh well, I'll figure something out. I'm just trucking along, trying to decide if I want to do one more pull on this. I kind of like the shape. What I'm going to do is... I'm gonna check the thickness, like so. Right. So, it's like slightly thicker at the bottom there, but it's not really too bad. I'm gonna go for one more pull, I'm gonna do it. idea for a little series of work I would like to do, which um, is based off of some of my favorite music. Uh, which, I don't know, it's kind of interesting to think about. Like, I, when I first started doing pottery, I didn't really listen to music when I worked on it. I mean, I did, because uh, in the studio when I was in school, 
we would put like Pandora on, but it was usually just like pop music or it was uh, like older music and it was more like background noise. I didn't really listen to like music that I actually listened to most of the time. And I would listen to like YouTube videos a lot uh, or like podcasts I was really into. And that was like a year and a half probably that I pretty much just listened to people talking when I would do pottery. Because I kind of just liked the background noise. Like sometimes I would feel like music itself was like distracting I guess because I would get too, uh, too excited about that. So I listened to like, I don't know, I guess you could say harder music. I wouldn't necessarily call it that, but you know, some of the stuff I listen to is a little more high energy and sometimes I just like to be relaxed. Sometimes I don't listen to anything at all. Um, but in the last few months I've started listening to music while I work. I'm listening to music through headphones right now while I'm talking to you. So that's pretty exciting. So now I'm going to make pieces listening to certain songs and then I'm going to make the pieces kind of, uh, you know, represent the song. Or at least like the surface decoration. So I thought that would be kind of a fun thing to do. So stay tuned for that. liked the shape of it more before I did that last pull, but I think, I think I might just kind of like push it in a little bit. It's always really difficult for me to explain how to like attempt to fix a wobble in a pot. There's really no good method to it. You just kind of gotta like try and believe in yourself and like hope for the best. of having almost overworked the pot. So I think I'm going to call that... Yeah, now I can have like a kind of cute little foot ring probably. I don't really even want to bevel it too much. You kind of give it a little bevel to help cut it off the wheel. And usually like I would want to trim that away, but I want to keep bottom of this mug a little wider so that it doesn't uh, doesn't fall over. I've also been having this kind of problem where the bottoms of my pots on the inside it's kind of like the, the bottom is like that and then it's the wall you know so it goes down a little bit right there and I don't really love that so I'm trying to figure out how to not do that. I'm assuming just compressing the bottom more so, but I try. But anyways, I think that is 
pretty solid. I'm gonna clean the inside up. It's a little isn't even made of wire it's like a, a plastic kind of thing. I quite like that one okay, okay. sometimes it's good to just kind of hit it twice and then I didn't throw this on a bat because really difficult to attach them to my wheel because my screws are just normal screws they're not bad screws because I am just the best potter in the world and by that I mean I'm just trying to get by oh. okay cool we didn't we didn't mess that up too much lifting it up Kind of a nice, decent sized pot there. Give you a little close up. And then this is just what it looks like from the top and the inside. Yeah. Cute little pot. That's my thumb next to it. So it's almost, it's about the same height as, you know, my thumb and my hand. So that's pretty neat. It's a pretty big mug, but I know some people are into that, so. That's all that I have for you guys today. I hope you found this video both entertaining and educational. If you did, please like this video if you haven't already. Uh, you can also subscribe for more pottery related content. You can also find me on Instagram at Ceramic Sabrina, so go on and follow me over there. And. Yeah, I think that's about it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you hopefully very soon. Bye.